Hey there folks, so today I'm not going to talk about anything in particular, but I'm going to try to go over a couple of general strategies, tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it for being more effective while you're soloing in a Liberator. For this video I'm just going to focus on things that I've been asked a lot and things that I remember I had a lot of a problem with when I was learning how to solo lib. But hopefully I'm going to be doing a couple more of these, so if you have anything specific that you want answered, feel free to leave a comment below, send me a message, and I will try to get to that in a future video. So first thing I'd like to talk about is Dalton positioning. You're going to notice in a lot of my videos, until I actually get into a dogfight, I usually have my Dalton positioned basically forward on the Liberator, and whenever I get a chance, I like to leave it at that after switching into the seat and getting back into the pilot seat. Now, you don't necessarily have to have it positioned forward on yours, but I would definitely advise finding an angle that you like, maybe an angle that you put yourself in quite often when you're switching into that seat, and try to remain fairly consistent with where you put your Dalton. What that's going to allow you to do is line up your target before you actually switch. You're going to know where that Dalton is pointing and put your target there so that when you switch in, you've already done a little bit of the aiming for yourself and you don't have to swing the Dalton quite as far to get your target. It's also going to help a lot in more of a frantic battle type situation because you're not going to be thinking, okay, I got my Dalton behind me and a little bit to the right this time, so I need to change where I'm going or I need to find my target. It's just going to be a lot more muscle memory. You're going to put your target where you want it. You're going to switch. Your Dalton's already going to be looking at it. You're going to make that minor adjustment, fire off, and then switch back into the pilot seat and move on. Now, I understand that in a frantic dogfight, you've got two or three targets. You're switching around. You're not going to be able to do that. But if you're doing one person at a time or after you finish a fight, I would definitely recommend trying to put the Dalton back to your base location, and then next time you run into someone, you will be ready to fight them. Now, the next part, and what I feel is probably the hardest but the most rewarding to master, is going to be general positioning. In essence, when do you want to attack, how do you want to attack, when do you want to run, and how do you want to run. Now, the first part is going to be when do you want to attack and how. In general, I like to have the advantage when I attack for fairly obvious reasons. When you're soloing in a Liberator, if you come up against a 2 of 3 or a 3 of 3 Liberator crew or a good ESF pilot, you're really at a distinct disadvantage because you only have about half of the damage available to you that a good Liberator crew has. So the way that you get around this is giving yourself a massive advantage at the beginning. Essentially, I always try to get the jump on people. If I can, I end the fight before it even begins by dropping on them, tank bustering, daltoning, something that basically takes them out of the fight before they get a chance to fight back. And a lot of this is going to have to do with your patience. There's been times where I've followed a target across the entire continent, waiting for them to get distracted, drop down low, give me that opportunity that I need to drop in and take them out safely. Now, my preferred method of taking them out safely is to drop in on my target from above and behind them, matching their flight pattern. What this allows me to do is line up a fairly easy either tank buster or Dalton shot, because we're both flying in the same direction at about the same speed. I'm trying to minimize the factors that I have to account for. If I'm coming in at an angle, coming straight at them, coming from the side, they're going to be moving in two directions away from me at once, which means I have to account for two different angles, two different drops. Everything starts to change and get much more complicated. In addition, it allows them a little bit more time to, if they're a Liberator, roll over and hit me with the Dalton. If they're an ESF, turn an Afterburn out of there. If I come in directly from on top and behind, I can typically finish off a target in one Tank Buster clip, and you just don't have to worry about that target anymore, you can move on to the next one. At this point, I know you're all probably thinking, hey, anyone who has ever done anything ever knows that things don't always go according to plan, and in a game like Planetside, unaccounted factors often jump up and kind of screw you. And you're completely right. Luckily, there are some things that you can do in a Liberator to mitigate that problem or hopefully get away to it. 
you can sustain a fairly large amount of damage before you go down, and that's pretty vital to getting out of a bad situation. Now, one of the first things you want to do is figure out a way to break line of sight. Right now, I'm fighting on Ezemir, and you can't really break line of sight on Ezemir because it's kind of a large open plain with not much cover. On Indar, this is a little bit easier. You have canyons, you have a lot of cliffs. You can break line of sight. But let's say you're on Esmir. How are you going to break line of sight? Well, first of all, you can use any type of building. Tech plants, bio labs, and amp stations are all pretty good if you're around them. If nothing else, you can usually get behind a post, get behind a wall, and slow down that fire. Give yourself a couple of seconds to reevaluate the situation and figure out what you're going to do. The large purple crystal shards going up into the air also make fairly good cover. They might not look like it, but when you get pretty close, the majority of them will actually cover most of your liberator, and it will be almost impossible for an enemy to hit you while you're behind them. Let's say, though, you're really bad day. You're 800 meters up over a wide open plane, and you're getting engaged. What do you do from here? Well, the first thing you want to do is analyze the situation. You want to figure out what and who is attacking you, and from there figure out whether you think you can kill them. If you think you can before they take you out, your situation is pretty simple. You turn around and you fight them. However, if you're too outnumbered, if the people you're getting attacked by you know are better and will kill you, you've got to figure out how to get away from that situation. Now, if you spotted the threat early and they're still quite a ways out, barely within firing range, what I would advise doing is starting to drop towards the ground and get back to friendly territory. Now, you can fly in a straight line, however, the problem with that is you're going to be incredibly easy to hit. So I would alternate between flying in a straight line and doing little maneuvers. It doesn't have to be huge, a couple degrees to the left, a couple degrees to the right, it's going to alter your path enough that you're going to become much more difficult to hit. If you get engaged a little bit closer, you have more of a problem. If you try to just flat out run away, they might be close enough to bring you down quickly, or if it's a liberator, they're within easy Dalton range. At this point, you want to try to gain ground between yourself and your opponent. If it's a liberator following you, that's pretty difficult to do because they can go at least as quick as you. And if it's an ESF, they can go quicker. At this point, what you're going to want to do is roll your liberator to the side so that your belly gun is pointing towards your opponent. And from here, simply switch back and forth in between jumping into the Dalton or the Shredder, if that's what you're using, firing a round or two at your enemy, getting back into the pilot seat, and running away. Hopefully what this will do is give them a little bit of pause, maybe you'll land a shot, maybe you'll bring them really close, and what they're going to do is fall back a little bit because they're trying to stay alive too. And hopefully this will give you enough time to break distance, get into friendly territory, or get into a warp gate and escape. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about is when to use what weapon, and we're going to start with the tank buster. In general, the tank buster is good at close ranges in a head-to-head -head type of scenario. The main limiting factors on it are how quickly you go through the magazine and how slow the velocity of the rounds are. What this means is that if your opponent is moving, you're going to have to be leading them a lot, and you also don't have too much room for air. The two things that I like to do to counter these weaknesses are, one, I like to lead the opponent more than I even think I should. I usually tend to underestimate how far I should lead and miss due to that, which means that I'm putting the crosshair a little bit further than I think I even should be, and that's usually going to help me out. To counter how quickly you go through a magazine, I like to burst fire until I'm getting hit markers. What I mean by this is that if the ESF is coming directly at me, I start firing a little bit earlier than I normally would in order to get a feel of whether they're going up, whether they're going down, and where I need to be aiming. Once I get a hit marker or two, I'm going to try to keep that same lead and unload the full clip. Hopefully most or all of them are going to hit, and I'm going to take them out quickly. So the next weapon is going to be the Dalton, and I'm going to have a little bit more problem trying to tell you a set time to use it, because in all honesty, a little bit of it is going to actually come down to how confident you're feeling with that weapon today. There are some days when I feel really good with the Dalton, and I'm relying on it, I'm hitting shots, and I'm just going. Other days, I'm not feeling as good, I'm missing more, and I'm going to rely on the Tank Buster a lot more. I'm a little bit steadier with it, I know what I can do with it.
but there are definitely a few situations where the Dalton should almost always be your go-to weapon. The first one is when you are getting attacked from behind by an ESF or a Liberator. At this point, you're going to want to roll over, get the Dalton facing them, switch in, and start taking pot shots. You can either take one or two right off the bat and then turn to engage with Tank Buster, or you can keep falling away and sending out those Dalton rounds. What this is going to allow you to do is analyze the situation and figure out what, who, and how many things are following you. From here, as I said, you can keep Daltoning or you can turn around to engage. Once you get into an engagement, you should really try to limit your usage of the Dalton. The main reason for this is that while you are in that seat, you can't really control where the Liberator is going, and against a good opponent, they'll take that time to get around and behind you and put a lot of damage on your Liberator while you can't really do anything about it. That being said, if your opponent flies right under your Liberator or flies into that sweet spot where you hit 9 out of 10 Daltons, you're definitely going to want to take that opportunity because, as you know, you land one Dalton and the fight is over if you're fighting an ESF. But let's say that you're not so confident with the Dalton. How do you get better at it while you're soloing? What I usually do to practice is when I'm fighting someone who I'm quite frankly not worried about them killing me, I rely on the Dalton a lot more and try to kill them with the Dalton, not the Tank Buster. If you're fighting someone who is a newer ESF pilot or just doesn't seem to be doing that much damage, you can afford to miss a half dozen to ten Daltons while you're trying to get them because they're probably not going to put enough damage on your Liberator to kill you. This is a good way to practice and it'll really help you get your Dalton and skills up for when it counts against a good opponent. Now, the final weapon in your Solar Liberator arsenal is going to be the much-loved Walker or Drake tail gun. Now, believe it or not, this little guy does actually have uses in really two, well, we'll say three situations, but you only live through two of the situations. The first situation is if you've just passed by your opponent and set them on fire with the Tank Buster or the Dalton. At this point, instead of going to all the trouble of turning your Liberator around and killing them with the Tank Buster, it's usually much quicker and easier to just switch into that third seat and kill them with the tail gun. Another situation would be if you feel like utterly and completely humiliating your foe and destroying them with only the tail gun. Afterwards, I would advise saving that video, putting it up on YouTube, and relentlessly making fun of whoever you killed. The final time that this will come in handy is when you've had your Liberator up for a long time, you need to go to bed, you need to go to work, you need to do something, rely on your tail gun, and you're probably going to be able to get rid of your Liberator pretty quickly. So, hopefully this video was helpful or fun for you to watch. Like I said at the beginning, if you have any other questions that you want me to address in a later video like this, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment below, and I will do, do my best to give you an answer to that. Thanks for watching. Oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh, guys.